Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at Linux Mint 21. So stay tuned right after this. Linux Mint 21, I am really late. I mean, I, everybody I know, that they, they, they always try to jump. As soon as something new comes out, they'll, you know, there's probably been 2,000 videos on Linux Mint 21 already, but I I didn't get to it. <laughs> it's just, I'm, I'm way behind. It was released back in uh, July the 31st. So, yeah, it's been you know, almost a month. So this will be supported uh, until 2027. Linux Mint is based on the Linux kernel 5.15. So we're at 5.19.2, and I think that's still a, a release candidate. But um, the package base for Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu 22.04. Now, I don't know if they've incorporated the changes that Ubuntu just put in for 22.04.1, but they may have. I don't know. But there are three desktop environments that you can choose from. There is uh, Cinnamon 5.4. You can use Mate, and that's version 126. And there's XFCE, and of course, that's 4.16. It's been around, that's been around for a while. Minimum requirements, of course, is a you have to have an x86 64-bit CPU, uh, at least two cores is my recommendation. They don't have a particular recommendation, but I don't know anybody that's running trying to run an operating system today on one core, unless it's a server. You could probably get by with that on a server, but a desktop, I wouldn't recommend it. I, I mean, dual core would be the minimum, and quad would be probably where you would be the most responsive. Um, the memory, two gig, is what they recommend. That's possible, although I think you'd be a lot happier with four. Uh, just give you that extra headroom. They recommend 20 gig of disk. Uh, as a minimum, and 100 gig is the recommended. Which, yeah, I mean, if you're going to do anything useful with it, you'll probably want a lot more than even 100. Uh, at 1024 by 768 is the screen resolution or better. So, yeah, <laughs> or better. And that's just to see what's on the screen, right? I mean, if you, if you have smaller resolutions than that, because their default screen is set to 1024, then you'll probably have trouble seeing it all. It is possible to upgrade from 2003 to 21, so you don't have to wipe it and start over, but I did not read the installation instructions. Uh, I don't have 2003 to install, so um, I could show you if that's what you want to see, but not today. Uh, the key features that are in Linux Mint is there's they had to replace the thumbnailer to address an issue where some of the file types weren't showing up any thumbnails at all. And I guess there was some issues with certain file types that it would not show their the uh, thumbnails. But I have an app image here, and you can see that it is displaying the app image thumbnail for Etcher, which is a, a green box, a cube. Then I have some PNG files here, and I can see you know what they are. I also have an EPUB, which is a book. Uh, this one is a, yeah, it's War of the Worlds. And then I have a WebP, which is one of the ones that it wasn't doing. And then I uploaded some MP3s, and it brings in the album art. So, uh, yeah, it's, that's pretty good. It's It seems to be working just fine. But there's supposed to be a little process monitor that can come up and run, and it sits down in your tray, and it will, it will, I guess just it'll flag you if there is background tasks going on because you may not know. And all of a sudden you may see a little bit of a performance dip and wonder what's going on in your system. Well, that could be a backup. It could be a download for um, updates or something like that that you know you just didn't know about. Vanessa has, there's contributions and a whole list of people that did these. So yeah, that's, that's pretty neat ones. I, I kind of like that one, the agate marble. Kind of looks like an agate marble anyway. So yeah, there's lots of artwork to choose from here. Of course, you can always upload your own photos as well. So one of the things you can do with sticky notes is you can come in here to the preferences and under the notes tab, you can select cycle colors. Now by default, I think it's set to yellow. So you can change it to cycle colors, which means that every time you open a new note, it will give you a different color, which is nice, I guess. I mean, that's pretty. And we did, I did mention that some of the, the some that the Linux kernel is 5.15. Uh, so what do you get with that? One of the things you get with it is 
in the past, we've had the kernel support for NTFS has been read only. And so you had to go use the fuse based user land version of NTFS if you wanted to have full support. Um, but that's no longer in 515. Uh, there is a Paragon uh, software provided a full up NTFS. So you now have read write, you have journaling, and it supports, I think, up to version 3.1 of NTFS. ButterFS support uh, provides FS Verity, uh, and that just provides integrity and authenticity support. Uh, so that protects your read only files. Uh, there's also ID mapping that's supported in BTFS now, and that provides the ability to map the user and group settings from one mount to another. So, because in ButterFS, you can have soft mounts just like you do with NFS. Uh, there's also the Daemon, D A M O N, which is the data access monitor. That's also now supported in 5.15. That allows you to monitor memory and and it provides an access pattern of specific user space processes. So you can keep an eye on things a little bit better. Okay, so I what I did was I went out and I downloaded the hardening script from Constructors. That's the one that they use for Ubuntu. It works on either 2004 or 2204. So I thought, well, I'll I'll try it on Linux Mint and see what happens. So let's let's um, let's uh, let's run. Linus. It takes quite a while, so I I didn't I didn't uh, I didn't record it while it ran. It uh, the the yeah the ADE script takes quite a while, especially now that I have time shift set up with a uh, with a snapshot that I am checking that directory as well. So we scored an eighty nine. Kind of disappointing actually, because normally. Normally, I should think I would see at least a 90 for these, but there's probably some, there's probably a few things that maybe it doesn't like. Yeah, okay, so we need to password protect the grub loader. The hardening script does not do that. Uh, expiration dates, yeah, we aren't divided up, so that counts heavily against us. We don't have our home and var and temp and all those directories on their own file system. Yeah, that's, that's all normal stuff. So not too bad. There's just a few things left to do. So I didn't have, I can't believe it. I didn't have any issues today. Uh, I didn't run into any issues with it. I am running the benchmarks right now, and I will have those for you at the end of the, of, uh, of the video. But uh, it seems very responsive to me. It seems like it, uh, it has, they have delivered exactly what they said. We, we obviously, we went through and looked at the thumbnail or support the profile of the system, it's about 8.6 gig out of the box. And of course, as you install things, it will take more. So they're probably right on the money on 20 gig for the basic in order to be able, you know, to do anything with it. Uh, you'll want more storage. Uh, so I overall, the score for the security piece or the hardening index is 64, which is puts it right about in the middle. It's still, of course, a fail. It's under 70. But uh yeah, you, I mean, it doesn't take long to fix that. That's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you again. Bye for now.